Hello, I'm Ken Bozeman, Professor Emeritus of Voice from Lawrence University Conservatory of Music in Appleton, Wisconsin. On this video, I'll be explaining a strategy for improving your ability to tune your resonator kinesthetically. You can reveal or play or demonstrate the resonant structure or the sound transfer characteristics of your resonator by introducing into the vocal tract any noise with a sufficiently broad spectral content, such as a vocal fry. I especially like to use something that I call the chiaroscuro whisper, the bright dark whisper. The typical whisper is high larynx and, and has a high noise, high pitch to noise content. Unlike the typical whisper, the chiaroscuro whisper uses a relatively neutral, settled larynx and a lower pitched noise. It is done using light, affect, minimal but sufficient articulatory changes from vowel to vowel, and a, a noise that has a broad enough spectral content so that both the under vowel noise pitch and the over vowel pitched noise are both present and balanced in the output. Keys to doing the chiaroscuro whisper include finding as low a pitched noise per vowel as is comfortably possible without using any yawny pulling back and down of the tongue. So for example, like this. No lowering of the pitch by doing this. Pulling it back like that. And no typical whispering, which is more out in the mouth. Instead, Once you find that lower pitched noise, you want the noise to be as noisy, sort of brightly noisy at that lower pitch as possible with no dull hollowing. The, the noise will be hollowed and dulled if you go in the yawny direction with the tongue backing and lowering. Furthermore, the sensation of the turbulence of the noise is centralized in the chiaroscuro whisper and sits roughly between the tongue dorsum and the palate, or slightly inside of that sensation, not out in front of the tongue dorsum, out in the mouth, as in a typical whisper. A typical whisper, the sound sensation is somewhat mouthy and spread. In the chiaroscuro whisper, it's more central. And you'll notice in the typical whisper, the tendency to over-articulate the vowels. In the chiaroscuro whisper, minimal articulation to get the vowel to happen. Almost feels like a ventriloquist. Second, thirdly, you will also get a fairly clear sense of the pitch center of the over vowel in the chiaroscuro whisper. If you do this often enough, that pitch center will be consistent for you every time you do it. So, for example, in mine, this particular vowel sequence, I can tell you the pitches of all of those over vowels. But as you do it, you should gain an increasing awareness of both the over vowel pitch and tone color and the under vowel noise as well, so that there's some balance between the two, particularly as you centralize the noise sensation. As long as the noise sensation is too far to the front, as in a typical whisper, you won't be able to notice the quality and the content of the under vowel noise. So you want to find some balance between those two. If you under articulate the vowel sufficiently, <clears throat> you will be able to hear the under vowel content and pitch more clearly. Here's the over vowel pitch again of a few vowels. Here's the under vowel. And you can hear a duet between the two.
you should always use sincere light expression because that's the most natural way to phonate. It's our programming for in the wild phonation since phonation occurs primarily from the impulse to express feelings. So the final result should feel simple, honest, expressive, minimally articulated, and centralized in, in location, sensation location. Should be very easy to do. So in sum, a low-pitched, clear noise, centralized with light expression. It is useful in finding it and exploring it to do the two exaggerated uh, errors, the mouthy frontal typical whisper, in which the sound noise is less organized, less clearly pitched, <clears throat> higher in pitch and further out in front of the mouth, or the exaggeratedly low-pitched yawny whisper in which feels very effortful in the throat. The right one centers itself very nicely. It's very easy to produce and gives you a nice timbre example of the resonant structure of your vocal tract. This works well as I did it for all pitches in which passive vowel migration is appropriate per vowel. But you can also explore active vowel modification using the Kaurasgoro whisper. That will be for a later video. Thank you very much. Hope this is helpful.